Who was the most dominant team in pro football history? The 1972 Miami Dolphins? How about the 1948 Cleveland Browns? They were both undefeated champions of their respective leagues. Or maybe Lombardi's Packers. Or even the 85 Bears. Not so fast. There was a team in mainstream professional football that excelled beyond any of those mentioned above. My name's Darren Hayes, and I'm the author of a book, The World's Greatest Pro Iron Team, the 1903 Franklin All-Stars. And I'm proud to say that the Sports History Network is giving away a signed copy of this book to a lucky winner in our latest giveaway, where you can sign up at sportshistorynetwork.com slash giveaways and get your name entered today. Good luck. The boxers have been given their instructions. The seconds are out. The crowd is ready for another edition of Shoulder Roll Virtual Boxing with your presenter, the boxing historian, Greg Rashid. Well, I want to say swatty cup to everyone out there. This is Greg Rashid with another edition of the Shoulder Roll Virtual Boxing Podcast. Heard at your convenience on so many platforms, so amazing. And by the way, if you are new to the program, yes, I'm in Bangkok, Thailand. Loving it. And you may hear some uh, construction outside here. I always keep the windows open. Sometimes I go on the balcony because the weather's all just wonderful over here. And I just love you know, just feeling the hot breeze that's coming in. But anyway, we're not talking about weather today. We're talking about boxing. And this is the Shoulder Roll Virtual Boxing Podcast. And I want to thank all of you folks out there who have really contributed as far as uh, suggestions for the program. And one suggestion I need, one thing I really need, my old mic broke. And I really, really need you folks out there to come and help me out be promoters of this program. Go to my Patreon site, Nourish by History. Look for Shoulder Roll Virtual Boxing. Also go to Buy Me a Coffee. Look for Nourish by History, Shoulder Roll Virtual Boxing Podcast. Really need your support. Really need to get promoters out there just to, you know, to help fund the program and keep things going because people love it. But it takes... Uh, some money, bodies they call it over here, to keep the lights on, keep everything going, and to keep these shows going. So please support the program. And I want to thank those promoters who have done so thus far. And today's program is being promoted by Bob Poet. I want to thank Bob for doing this today. But uh, this show, and before we go on, before we go on, I got some breaking news. Some of you may have already heard this, but maybe some of you hadn't. But the Tyson Fury, Alexander Yuzik unification heavyweight fight, which was scheduled for February 17th in Saudi Arabia, has been postponed because of a cut above Tyson Fury's right eye that he sustained in training. Now, I don't know what's going to happen now. I have a feeling that Usyk is still going to fight somebody because there's a lot of money involved in, in that event. And there's so many people who've already made, who've made plans in advance to go there. And I don't know if they're going to get any cancellations. And I know the Saudis, they want their money. So they're going to put somebody in there to fight who's on this, on this fight. Don't know who it's going to be yet, but we'll see. Supposedly this, uh, the Usyk uh, Fury fight will be uh, in June. But I got a feeling, I'm going to say this honestly. You may disagree with me. But Tyson Fury tends to do some very shady things. And boxing can be very shady. Him and his camp. Uh, if you remember, um, a couple of years ago, he got in trouble as far as his gloves not having padding in them. Especially during the um, first and second of Deontay Wilder fights. He got in trouble a number of years ago for using PEDs. He postponed his original fight against uh, Vladimir Klitschko when they were fighting, when Klitschko was the champion. He delayed that for, um, because, you know, some people said he did that because uh, Vladimir was getting older and he wanted him to wait and then go after him. You know, he's, he's done just a lot of interesting little things that I wonder about. And I'm wondering, 
because uh, Usyk is 37. And Tyson Fury is not a spring chicken. I mean, Tyson Fury is uh, 35, but I can see his camp saying, we'll delay this a little more. We'll see what happens. And the, the main thing is that he'll be a little older. You know, we can go in there and go after him then. So we'll, we will see what happens with this. But yeah, he, you know, Tyson, I, I'm going to put this prediction out there. Despite all the money involved, the Saudis are putting up a ton of money on this. It wouldn't surprise me if Tyson Fury just retires. That cut looks, I mean, it looks awful. And if you remember in 2019, he had the same cut against Otto Welling. And that was a fight that should have been stopped. But because uh, Tyson was a champion, they let it go on. It should have been stopped. He sustained, after the fight, 47 stitches. If it was anyone else, they would not have let that fight continue. It was just awful, that cut. But they let it go on. So, I, you know, it looks like it's the same cut. And it's delaying this fight if the fight really happens. But we'll see. We'll see. And I have to, you know, I have to say to you, even though we do what if fights on here, we talk about what's going on in the world of boxing currently and also in the world of just combat sports in general. And so that'll come up from time to time on this program. And today's event, and before I say that, I want to say one thing too. I want to send my condolences out to the family of Carl Weathers. And some of you may know uh, Carl Weathers who played Apollo Creed in the Rocky series. He passed at the young age of 76 uh, just the other day. And just, you know, give our condolences to him. You know, just a great, from what I've learned, just a great guy. You know, excellent actor. Not just in the Rocky fights, but so many other, I mean, Rocky uh, movies. But so many other movies that he did. Uh, he's in The Mandalorian. That's on currently on, uh, I think it's on, um, I think it's on Netflix or maybe on Amazon. But anyway, he's on that. You know, he's, he did a lot. And so let's honor him. Uh, in fact, uh, I got a uh, Facebook uh, note from someone asking me, you know, maybe you should do a tribute fight with um, Rocky and Apollo Creed. And maybe I will next week, maybe so. But it depends on, you know, if you folks out there want that, and I will do it. So send your, you know, if your comments to me, either on my YouTube channel, Nourished by History, or on the Sports Network, History Network channel, or wherever you hear this program, wherever you hear it, send your comments there. You can go to my Facebook site, Gregory Rashid, and just leave your comments there. And so many people have done it, various sites. You know, wherever you hear this program, please send in your comments there. And, and, and offer your suggestions as far as future sh shows, as far as who do you want me to put in here? As far as two fighters, what if? Because I know a lot of you. You sit around with your buddies, your boxing aficionado, and you're saying, I wonder what would happen if uh, Joe Lewis fought Muhammad Ali, which we had on this program. Or if Tyson Fury fought Mike Tyson. You know, what would happen? I know you sit around thinking about that. So this is the show that's dedicated to your imagination, what if, it's not like the definitive answer. Any of these fights that we do on here, it's not saying, well, that's, oh, yeah, that's, that, that's right. Yeah, that proves it, that, you know, that guy beat this guy. Or oh, that woman beat this woman, because we got some women fighters that we're scheduling, too. But um, it's just imagination, because I could do this. I could do this on the, uh, and the computer program I use is Title Bout 2 Boxing PC. Great game. And I use that to come up with these results of these fights. But, you know, I could do it a thousand times. One guy can win 50% of the times, the other 50% of the times. You don't know, but it's just fun. That's all this is, it's fun. In today's event, I know when I mention this event, some of you are going to automatically say, oh, that's ridiculous. But as uh, promoter Bob Poet suggested for today's event, we're going to have the two sugars, Sugar Ray Leonard versus Sugar Ray Robinson. And already I can hear you saying, oh, come on, man, you got to be kidding. I mean, Sugar Ray Robinson, he's the pound-for-pound pound 
greatest fighter in any division ever. And you're going to put him up against Sugar Ray Leonard? Well, hold your horses. Hold on a minute. When you look at, when you look at Sugar Ray Leonard's uh, body of work, and look how he fought, because he was a hard-hitting, fast fighter. You know, he had a you know, great defensive fighter, too. Look at him, and look at some of the old films of um, Sugar Ray Robinson. And we're fighting them in the welterweight division. Unfortunately, we don't have film of Sugar Ray Robinson when he was younger, when he was going like 87 and 0. You know, we don't have that. We have like the Robinson from the late 40s and 50s. And so he's older, still looking great. I mean, looking great. But as I've read from so many uh, books, articles and all, old timers talking about Sugar Ray Robinson, they said that when he was a kid, when he was had that unbeaten streak, uh, 87 and 0, he was something. He was a sight to behold. He's just amazing. So we're putting this together today, and I have to say, for some of you who don't know, I got this idea from many years ago when I was a kid. It was a show that was coming on radio, and it was out of Miami, and they had this was like '67, 1967, and they were doing all-time great heavyweights, and they included Muhammad Ali in this, but they kept calling him Cassius Clay. You know, which was silly. But at the time, Muhammad Ali had been, you know, his title had been taken away from him. And he just couldn't fight, couldn't fight. You know, the powers that be, because he wouldn't go to the Vietnam War, he, stu he stood his ground. He thought it was a, you know, unjust war. And he was justified years later. But anyway, they put these fighters, heavyweight fighters, in this computer. The computer was probably as big as a, uh, probably as big as a, a house or something. It was, it was something really big. But anyway, what happened is that Muhammad Ali loses in this computer fight to James J. Jeffries, who Jack Johnson beat. And Ali had a fit. He just lost it. He sued this company and said, there ain't no way that someone like uh, Jeffries could beat me. So what the company said, now, you know what we'll do for you? We'll give you X amount of dollars if you agree to fight Rocky Marciano, who was the winner of this computer event, in a, a simulated fight, we'll do all the scenarios, have you two get in the ring and actually box and do like over 200 rounds and just see what happens. And so they got Rocky Marciano, at the time was in his late 40s. He was like about almost 50, 60 pounds overweight, was bald. Rocky Marciano lost weight looked good, got a toupee on his head, and they fought. And the results of this fight were was put on, what they, at the time, closed circuit TV in the movies. Closed circuit movies, I should say, in the movies. And I think it came out in 1969, 1970. But what happened was that it depended on where you were in the country. And I know in the deep south that Rocky Marciano won that fight. But the one I saw, you know, up in D.C. and folks in the north and all, they saw Ali win. And many years later, they finally showed this thing on regular television one night, and Ali won. You know, I think in 1979 they showed this thing. So anyway, that's kind of the inspiration for this show now. And I'm just, you know, depending for all you folks. I just love all you folks out there. All over the world, as a matter of fact, because I got people not only listening that listen to the various, pro, you know, places that you go to to listen to uh, podcasts, such as my channel, Nourished by History, or you go to the Sports History Network to listen to the show, or you listen on uh, every Sunday at 3 p.m. on KUHSDenver.com at 3 p.m., created by the one and only great Henry Archuleta, wherever you listen to the show. Just sit back and relax and enjoy Get your favorite beverage. Get your buddies together if you want, you know, if you want to talk about the fight. But we're going to get in this right now in the welterweight division. 15 rounds. Sugar Ray Robinson and Sugar Ray Leonard going to have at it. But before I do that, we have a commercial right now, one of the sponsors of this show. So let's hear that right now. Ladies and gentlemen, get ready for the ultimate knockout experience brought to you by Pillow Puncher Pro the boxing sensation that's softer than a grandma's hug. 
Pillow Puncher Pro. Where every hit feels like a hug and every defeat is a chance for a power nap. Order now and we'll throw in our exclusive Dreamy Corner kit for free. Pillow Puncher Pro. Because when life throws a punch, you throw a pillow. Order now and redefine the knockout experience. Today's battle in the welterweight division will feature two of the all-time great sugars in boxing history, Sugar Ray Leonard versus Sugar Ray Robinson. This fight is taking place in front of a packed crowd at the Capitol Center in Landover, Maryland. The crowd is a partisan one for hometown hero Ray Leonard, who is from Palmer Park, Maryland. This bout is being promoted by Bob Poet. The 15-rounder will be scored on the five-point must system. The referee will be Armando Garcia, born in Havana, Cuba, and now a resident of Bangkok, Thailand. The three judges are Vern Bybee, Richard James Davies, Michael Griffin. Sit back and relax as the bell sounds for round one. The fighter come out to ring center. Leonard is moving in and out, bobbing and weaving. Robinson's left jab is pawing, trying to find an opening. Leonard is bobbing and weaving, showing great head movement. Robinson misses with a left jab. Leonard lands a three-point lightning-fast combination. Leonard has some of the fastest hands in boxing history. Robinson is unfazed by the combo. Leonard is moving about the ring, trying to establish position. Leonard has cut off the ring and pinned Ray Robinson on the far ropes. Robinson slips out of Leonard's trap and connects with a three-point left cross. Leonard counters with a right jab for five points, followed by a six-point right bolo punch. Robinson is down. Robinson gets back to his feet at the count of two. No one expected that, especially Robinson. The crowd is on its feet, cheering their hometown boy, Ray Leonard. Leonard waves to the crowd. Leonard misses with a left jab, then lands a three-point right cross. Robinson clinches. Robinson comes out of the break, circling Leonard, showing his great footwork. Leonard is trying to find an opening. Robinson is bobbing and weaving. Leonard misses with a combination, but scores a two-point left cross. Leonard misses a combination. Robinson lands his own combination for three points. Robinson is getting to load up for a right hook when the bell sounds to end round one. The points scored in the first round. Leonard had 17 points. Ray Robinson with eight. Leonard gave Robinson a boxing lesson in that round. I know many of you are thinking Leonard would have no chance against the fighter considered to be the best pound-for-pound -pound fighter ever. But so far, Leonard is proving the critics like Jim and Dougie Woogie wrong. Round two has begun. Leonard has quickly cut off the ring and pinned Ray Robinson on the near ropes. Robinson uses his flashy footwork to slip off the ropes. Robinson is bobbing and weaving. Leonard is trying to find an opening. Robinson is fainting. He misses with a left jab. Leonard is moving in and out. Robinson lands a three-point combination. The fighters are in ring center. Leonard is stalking Robinson, who is showing Leonard he is just as fast on his feet as he is. Leonard is bobbing and weaving. Robinson is trying to find an opening with his probing left. Leonard lands a four-point cross that has sweat flying off Robinson's head. He felt that one. Robinson counters with a four-point left uppercut that snaps Leonard's head back. Leonard is on the retreat, shaking his head to clear it after that shot. Robinson is trying to find an opening. At ring center, Leonard fires a two-point combination as the bell sounds. The points scored in round two. Ray Leonard with six points. Ray Robinson tallied eight points. In that round, I noticed Robinson had made some defensive adjustments to counter Leonard's crosses by moving his shoulders to a different angle than before. The bell sounds for round three. Leonard and Robinson meet at ring center. Robinson misses with a combination. Leonard misses with a counter combination. Leonard lands a six-point lead right to Robinson's jaw. Robinson's legs did a dip after that punch. He is hurt. Robinson falls back into the ropes right above press row. Leonard lands a left cross for five points. The only thing keeping Robinson up are the ropes. Sensing the kill but a little anxious, Leonard misses with a right uppercut. Still on the ropes, Robinson counters with a two-point left jab. Leonard lands a right hook that buckles Robinson's knees for five points. 
Robinson's corner is telling him to get off the ropes. As his corner is screaming, Robinson lands a solid right cross. Leonard's knees buckled on that shot. From my vantage point, it looks like Leonard has suffered major swelling under his right eye from that cross. Leonard backs into ring center, followed by Robinson. Robinson misses with a left jab. Leonard counters with a five-point combination. Robinson appears hurt. Leonard misses with a combination, but scores with a four-point combo. Man, his hands are fast! Robinson clinches. The Garcia separates the fighters. Robinson lands a two-point combination. The fighters clinch as the bell sounds to end round three. The points scored in round three. Ray Leonard had 25 points. Ray Robinson with nine points. Even though Leonard dominated that round, there is concern in his corner about his right eye. Angelo Dundee is screaming at this cut man to put some ice on it. Leonard has a history with eye problems. That eye is swelling up quickly. I would hate to see the fight stopped because of that. The arena monitor is showing a replay of the punch that damaged Leonard's eye. There was a gasp from the crowd as they saw the monitor. The round four bell has sounded. Robinson misses with a left cross and right jab, but he scores with a three-point left uppercut and a three-point left hook to the stomach. Leonard is back pedaling away, pawing at his right eye. Robinson lands a four-point left jab. He is targeting the swollen eye. The fighters are in ring center. Robinson lands a three-point right cross, then misses a left cross. Leonard misses with a counter-right jab. Robinson lands a three-point left hook to the right eye. Robinson lands a two-point combination. Robinson misses with a left uppercut. Leonard counters with a three-point left hook. The fighters are at ring center as the bell sounds ending round four. The points scored in round four. Ray Leonard with three points. Ray Robinson had 19 points. He's doing his best, but the cut man cannot reduce the major swelling under the right eye of Ray Leonard. That thing looks like a tennis ball. Round five begins with Robinson missing a combo. The crowd goes wild as Leonard lands a left half bolo punch for four points that had sweat flying off Robinson's head. Robinson misses with a right uppercut. Leonard lands a five-point right uppercut. Robinson's legs buckled on that shot. Despite having his vision impaired, Leonard is still being aggressive and throwing bombs. Robinson clinches. The fighters are in ring center. Robinson lands a two-point left jab. Robinson lands a three-point left hook to the ribs. Robinson lands a five-point straight right that knocks Leonard into the near ropes. Robinson lands a left hook for another five points that caused Leonard to stagger to his left. Robinson misses with a left jab. Leonard counters off the ropes with a three-point right cross. Robinson lands another straight right for six points that stunned Leonard. Leonard is covering up in pain as the bell sounds ending round five. Round five points. Scored. Ray Leonard had 12 points, while Ray Robinson scored 22 points. The cut man has been unable to reduce the major swelling under the right eye of Ray Leonard. The ring doctor is in Leonard's corner, looking at the eye. Leonard and Angelo Dundee are pleading with him to let the fight continue. The ring doctor has told them that if the eye gets worse, he will tell the ref to stop it. The bell sounds for round six. Robinson meets Leonard at ring center and lands a combination for five points. He is targeting that right eye. Robinson lands a two-point combination. Leonard lands the four-point left hook. Leonard misses with a follow-up right cross. Robinson misses with a counter combination. Leonard lands a five-point right uppercut that knocks Robinson into the near ropes. Leonard lands a five-point left cross that keeps Robinson in the ropes. Leonard is showing a lot of courage. Many fighters would have called it a day after experiencing an eye injury like he has. But Leonard is fighting to please his fans and they are loving him for it. Leonard misses with a combination. Robinson counters with a crushing combination that knocks Leonard down. The crowd is screaming and stunned by this. Leonard gets back to his feet at the count of four. He staggers forward. Referee Garcia asks if he can continue. Leonard says yes. That right eye is completely shut. Robinson lands a partially blocked left jab for one point. Robinson lands a three-point left hook. Leonard is helpless against the ropes. He can't see Robinson's punches. Robinson lands a six. 
point combination that causes Leonard to turn his head and cover up. Referee Garcia has seen enough and calls a halt to this fight at the time of 2.48 of round six. The winner by technical knockout is... Ray Robinson. No one is complaining about the stoppage in Leonard's corner. Angelo Dundee comes out and hugs him. Sugar Ray Robinson also give Leonard a hug and tells him he is the best. The crowd is giving Leonard and Robinson a standing ovation for giving them a great fight. I hope that these two will meet again in the future. Leonard has to heal up first, but I can see them fighting again. I would like to thank everyone for tuning in today. A special thanks to Bob Poet for promoting this fight. If you would like to promote a fight between two legends on the Shoulder Roll Virtual Boxing Podcast, drop presenter Gregory Rashid a line on Facebook. You can also go to the YouTube channel, Nourished by History. Leave him a comment also on the website Sports History Network. Wherever you listen to this podcast, let us know if you want to promote a fight. This has been your commentor, Shoulder Roll Steve. We now return you to the Bangkok studio after the following commercial. When you note the low prices of Clipper Craft clothes, you're apt to be puzzled. How do they do it, you'll say? Well, the solution's no mystery at all once you know the facts. What makes them great values is the Clipper Craft plan, concentrating the buying power of 924 leading stores across the nation. Yes, remember that you buy these famous clothes at your local, favorite local store, where you're treated as a person, not just as another number on a sales check. These days, practically everything you buy costs more, but not so with Clippercraft. You can select your fall Clippercraft suit at only $35 and $40, with a few special numbers at $43.75. Clippercraft top coats and overcoats, too, are only $30 to $40. Sport jackets, but $24. Selling expensive clothes at inexpensive prices at the nation's finest independent stores is the great big idea behind the Clippercraft plan. That's why men who know insist on Clipper Craft clothes. So be sure to visit the Clipper Craft store in your city. The leading stores in the metropolitan area that bring you Clipper Craft clothes are Saks 34th, Broadway at 34th Street, Manhattan, Abraham and Strauss, Brooklyn, the Boulevard Men's Shop, Kresge, Newark, Newark, New Jersey, and the B&B Clothes Shop, 16408 Jamaica Avenue, Jamaica. These great, courteous, and friendly stores are proud to add their names to that of Clippercraft in the label of your suit, top coat, sports jacket, and overcoat. And I know Dougie Wuggy has a Clippercraft croak. <laughs> but anyway, hope you enjoyed that fight today. That was a uh, Robinson and Leonard, the two sugars. And I got to say, I can actually see that happening. You know, it's amazing um, what the imagination can do, what you can see in your mind. Because all radio is, or podcast, I should say now, it's theater of the mind. You imagine. And that was, a, that was just a great fight. And I hope you enjoyed it. Hope you enjoyed it. Leave your comments uh, to the various places that you listen to this program. You know, and support the program. Really support it. You know, we're trying to do our best here to give you the best entertainment possible with these podcasts. And like I said, really, I got to get another mic. I know that I really have to get one. Uh, the one I had before, my Blue Yeti is busted. And I, I went to get it fixed, but they can't fix them over here in Bangkok. And so I got to find one somewhere else. So just go to my Patreon site and just, you know, look for Nourished by History. Shoulder Roll Virtual Boxing Podcast, or go to, uh, or also go to Buy Me a Coffee, look for Shoulder Roll Virtual Boxing Podcast, Nourished by History, and support. Become a promoter. It only takes a dollar, you know, whatever you can contribute. That really would help. Really would help the program. But I'm just so happy so many people all over the world listen and love these programs and making their comments and all. And if you want to promote like Bob Poet today, Send me a line. Let me know who you want next on the program. You know, we'll definitely put it on. And as I said earlier, I have some new fighters like Devin Haney. I have a Usyk. I have Tyson Fury. I have a Canelo Alvarez. But as far as um, fighters, uh, other current fighters like Javante 
Tank Davis, uh, Shakur Stevenson, people like that. I don't have so any fighters that you want on this program for us to do a match with. Look at them from 2010 on back. Even the before the 20th century. You can uh, put those in there because we got some old, old fighters that are available that are ready to put in here. Thanks to uh, Tight About Boxing 2, the computer program. We'll put it in here. And I have to say, too, I have to give a shout out to the two other boxing uh, programs I use. Uh, one um, is Legends of Boxing PC. They're also uh, tabletop, too. And also Glory Days Boxing uh, tabletop game. I love, love bo- all three of these games. I just love them. They're really fun to play. And I'm hoping to have the authors of those games on this program at some point really hoping for that and I know they're listening so please let me know I've set some dates available for you folks and on a future program too looks like this month we're going to have um, the former middleweight contender Michael Elijah Day Jr. will be on here we're working on that right now we had um, had last month my buddy Devera Williamson former heavyweight contender so we work on getting you know it is about one time you know on the one hand imaginary fight but on the other hand we have real boxing on here and real combat sports and i'm over here in muay thai uh land so we're gonna have some muay thai fighters on here you'll be surprised you'll be surprised but again this is greg rashid and i want to say too i used to end the programs with some music but since i've been doing this program for some reason and i've been putting music on my programs for ages prior to doing shoulder roll virtual boxing and never had any problems all of a sudden i'm getting problems with youtube so i don't have any music except the background music you hear right now don't have any music for this program today i apologize for that i gotta work with youtube on that see what's going on but anyway as i always say go in love and go in peace help someone along the way you know, because we're all in this together. Wherever we are in this world, I'm over here in Thailand. You could be in Kenya, the U.S., wherever you're listening to the program. We're all in this together. It's our one world. Work together to change some things, make it better, bring positive energy to wherever you are. And when you get up every morning, just look in that mirror, hug yourself and say, I love myself. And if you're sight impaired, get up. Hug yourself and say you love yourself. Because if you don't love yourself, you can't do anything. You can't do a thing. You can't help anyone. And it's all about giving back, helping, volunteering, doing what you can. So do that, what you can, just to make your area, your condo area, your apartment, farm area, city area, suburb, wherever you are, make it just a better place. Again, this is Greg Rasheed. Go in love and go in peace. We'll see you next time on the Shoulder Roll Virtual Boxing Podcast. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time.